lot of tortoises. Without a doubt, the world's most famous tortoise species, especially in captive management. Stick around because I'm gonna tell you what it takes to properly house these animals indoors, especially during the cold months. So I'm outside walking through a sulcata tortoise pen because that's the easy part. During the warmer portion of the year, if you have a piece of property, you can set up a nice size pen for them. But now it's October, it's getting cold, so this is where the hard part comes in. And I brought you guys somewhere special. This is my friend Al Roach. We've known each other for more than 20 years and what he's done for his sulcata tortoises is a prime example of what needs to be done for them during the cold months. Sulcata tortoises are the world's third largest tortoise species, third only to the Aldabra and Galapagos species. They can grow to be more than four feet long if you're looking at a Sudanese sulcata. Those males get massive. Typically, you're looking at over 30 inches at least and over 200 pounds. So Al is gonna tell us a little bit about what he personally goes through keeping a herd of these things. So what are some of the challenges that you experience, at, and we'll start with outdoors. Right, well, obviously digging. Digging is a major problem. They like to burrow, they like to dig channels deep underground and they'll go underneath your fence so you got to have reinforced uh, fencing paneling the number one thing is don't let them be able to see out if they can see out and see through your fence then they'll just find a way to try and get through it if you board it up so you're pretty much restricting their line of vision mm -hmm. you're gonna have uh, you know less issues and they're not gonna be digging as much there's underneath on the bottom of this privacy fence there are cut panels of uh, pressure treated plywood, which is just more reinforcement on, on strength because they are strong animals. And also it kind of cuts down the vision through any of the holes underneath there so so that's a that's an excellent point that we brought up in a lot of different videos concerning all different species visual barriers are extremely important if the tortoises feel secure they learn the perimeter they also can get away from each other by hiding behind things but your fence line that perimeter fence really needs to be solid so that the animals can't see out because they don't grasp the concept of something like glass or mesh so you'll notice there's different spots here where owls had to kind of modify things because of the tunnels they've started digging right, right? Yep. so what are some of the things you've had to do here so I, I pretty much lay plywood down and sometimes use cinder blocks here I got a big uh, tub <laughs> so over here is kind of like a shelter and you know I put a lot of straw and hay under there so they can kind of and it stays dry it's pressure treated on top but it allows them to kind of take cover there at night so I feel if a lot of your tortoises have hideaways or places to go and you know just kind of hide out and, and especially at night, you're gonna see less tunneling as well. So if you can create something like this, um, so they can go under and pretty much get into almost complete darkness, you're, you're good, it's gonna, it's gonna help a, a lot. So there, you're, you're making the animals feel secure. A stressed out tortoise, whether it's a sulcata or something as small as an Egyptian tortoise, if they're stressed like that, they're gonna wanna get out. They're gonna try, how can I make the situation better for myself? Do I dig out? Do I climb out? So when you give them refuge like that, you're offering them security and they naturally will calm down. So this is your basic style sulcata pen. How big is this thing right. overall well, all the way back? Well, width here, we're probably going at uh, 40 feet and then we're going this way about 35 feet. Okay, so 40 by 35, it's essentially a really big tortoise garden, but let's take you indoors where the animals are gonna be for the next several months. So here we are, we are inside a shed that Al has put up and dedicated mainly to his largest tortoise species. So he's got his herd of sulcatas in here and here, this is a female, right? Yeah. This, look at the size of this animal. Okay, this is actually supposedly a Sudanese. Right. So this is larger than your typical female. Our female Dixie is not too far behind this, but males get even larger. So you need to provide them with something like this. Now this is similar to what we do at Garden State Tortoise to where we have the larger tortoises on the ground and then up top we have like a horseshoe of raised tortoise tables. So that allows you to keep multiple species in a nice heated building for the winter, the species that don't naturally hibernate while housing your larger species on the ground like this safely. So how, how, uh, how big is this? This uh, shed is about 15 by 20. 15 by 20 and uh, can you explain how you have it insulated too? What the right. flooring is? Right, so the flooring is everything 
in this shed is built uh, through pressure treated lumber. And so there's pressure treated plywood underneath. Last winter we had that down. Uh, didn't have time to get it done before the winter, but this year we put tile down. So tile is gonna protect the, the lumber underneath as well as the pressure treated, but there's also a drain over here. So any unwanted moisture here just kind of funnels down. So it's pitched? It's kind of pitched, yeah. Cool. So. And then as far as heating it goes, you know, obviously there's heat lamps in here that, so the tortoises can bask and reach uh, optimal temperature to be able to eat and breed and do anything else they need to do. But what overall is heating this building? We have a natural gas heater right on the wall behind us. Very nice, okay. So this is an excellent example of what needs to be done for these animals. Now sure, Al has a herd of them or a creep of them, but just one of these animals needs a space like this. So I've seen people offer them rooms, uh, keep them in basically a large portion of a dedicated basement, or you can have an external reptile building like we do, where one whole side of it is dedicated to the larger species. That's even where we put our rhinoceros iguanas uh, for the next several months. But the problem that arises from all this is people get these animals, they go to reptile shows where they just order them online, and there's still a lot of outdated information out there that makes people think that, okay, here's this little tiny golf ball tortoise, it's a baby, it's cute, it's adorable, oh my gosh, I have to have it, but they don't realize that this is going to happen. This here, folks, this is inevitable. These animals get this big no matter what, and they're a very resilient species. Once they surpass that little fragile hatchling size and they get to be, say, an adult, now they're becoming little tanks. They're essentially bulldozers that bulldoze through life, and you cannot keep them in a 10-gallon tank or a little tortoise table and expect them to stay that small. They will outgrow it and destroy it because, as Al was just saying, they are so destructive. So you need to have a very secure building, shed, room, something that can safely house these animals to keep both them safe and yourself safe. Correct. So addition to them just having basic general needs, whether they're small or large, there's also something you have to think about. Vast majority of female tortoises, like chickens, are going to lay eggs with or without a male. So whether you're purposely trying to breed the species or not, you have to be prepared for the females to be able to lay their eggs. Otherwise, you're gonna end up with an egg-bound female, which can result in death. So what Al's done right here is he's actually made a little nesting pit for them. So, is this actually cut out into the floor? Yes, and drops down? all the way straight through to the ground. Okay, and is it just all like timbers like this built yeah. all the way up? Yeah, so this is uh, basically just literally cut through the floor and then there's two by 12 around kind of keeping all the soil together and keeping okay. in there, but it goes down all the way through. I mean, about how deep? A few feet. Yeah. Big tortoise is gonna dig a very deep nest and they lay a lot of eggs. On average, how many eggs does a female lay for you? Uh, between two clutches a year, so maybe like 40 eggs I'll probably get for a female this year. Wow, for 40 eggs in a, in a big deep nest. So this is another requirement, especially if you have a female. And again, that's with or without a male. Female tortoises will most of the time produce eggs anyway. So by having something like this, keeping the animal safe, you're keeping the animal secure and allowing it to exhibit those natural behaviors because they're going to look for a spot and if they don't have a suitable nesting area, that's when they retain those eggs and then you end up with serious health issues. So Al has really gone above and beyond here for these animals. And again, I, I can't say it enough times that this is the kind of thing you need to be prepared for. But you know, a lot of these tortoises end up in rescues or in situations where they're given away. In fact, the ones that we have, and even some of the ones that are here, we're all rescues or surrenders, and we pass them on to Al because we can't handle that many of them. But with that, just because the tortoise might be free or inexpensive, comes major costs to put up something like this and, of course, heat it for the duration of winter. So what, give people an idea, what are they looking at? Uh, I mean, something this large, 20 by 15, you're probably looking at about 15,000. And that's, that, that's yeah. just for the bones, right? Well, it's... yeah, to basically place them on a building and put, you know, the tile down and insulation, the roof, yeah. So then you've got anything extra that you want to do, like the pressure treated raised pens, again, something we did at our place, and the general cost of electric or gas heating, and of course, feeding the animals. So remember that, the next time you go to a reptile show or a pet store and you see a little $50 baby sulcata or whatever they're going for now, what you're looking at later on really brings things up in cost.
So despite all the challenges that sulcata tortoises bring, it's important to note that they really are an amazing tortoise species. Bold personalities, incredibly resilient and hardy and responsive to their keepers. And I think what we were just talking about that a lot of people don't even realize, you know, we're so accustomed to this point to think, oh, they're so common, they're everywhere. But in nature, they're endangered. There's so few of them at this point that I think it's something around 16 or 17 percent of the original population still exists in their native Africa. And that's because they were competing for precious grasslands with cattle and other livestock. And if there's a takeaway you can give people with this species, like how would you sum them up? Like how do you personally feel about them? Forget about any of the negative aspects that, you know, we as keepers have brought along for them. Right. Well, I mean, they're personable animals and they'll eat right out of your hand. They're definitely one of my favorite animals that I have, specifically because they get large, and as well as the adabras that I have. Um, but, you know, it, it, you just kind of have to make sure you got the finances ready to go for when they get bigger. Yeah, that's, be prepared. That, that's, that's such a valid takeaway, a valid point. Be prepared. It's not just about when that animal is a baby. They're gonna grow into an immense animal and you need to be prepared for anything, even if it's a smaller species because they have extremely long lifespans. They're some of the longest lived vertebrates on the planet, tortoises in general, not just talking about the African spurred sulcata. So think ahead, do your homework, but we just showed you guys an incredible facility, an incredible way to house the adults, but I haven't even touched yet on how you get started with the babies. So let's head back to GST and talk about that. Hatchling sulcata tortoises are essentially an entirely different animal because, well, A, they're just a fraction of what they will eventually be in size, and as babies, they have entirely different requirements than the adults do. And the main thing is humidity. Like all baby tortoise species, sulcatas or African spur thigh tortoises require very high humid microclimates, and you create that by making a humid closed chamber. So keep in mind, as I've said in many videos, no matter where the geographic graphic origin is of the animal in nature, they need humidity to not only grow smoothly, because we now know it's not just tied to an improper diet, they need it to develop a strong skeleton, and they need to have firm shells, and they need to be able to lift themselves off the ground effortlessly so they have a tall walk. So setting them up appropriately from day one is what's going to give this animal, or any baby tortoise, the best shot at those long lives that they are supposed to live. So what do we do? We make something very simple. The object of this, which is just a simple storage container or tote that is plastic or rubber made, it offers them that closed chamber with that precious humidity day and night so the animal can grow at a nice normal rate, don't overfeed, but being subjected to a humid environment allows it to fill out appropriately and develop as nature would intend it to. This needs to be a very simple setup, folks, because baby sulcata tortoises can reach more than four inches in just the first year. So. You put them in here with a nice, humid, moisture-retaining substrate, a water dish at all times, and of course, a hide. The lights simply go on the top. You make a cutout on the lid of the Rubbermaid because this is going to stay on at all times so that it retains the humidity. And what I like to use are these combo lights. You do a UVB on one side and then a simple daylight basking bulb on the other side so that you're giving them both UVB and heat. And again, if you're using those coil bulbs for UVB, they are safe in this kind of situation because it's restricted to just one corner of the environment instead of having the animal blasted right in the face with it at all times. I've used this method for a very, very long time with a wide variety of species, definitely sulcatas too, and they they all grow wonderfully and they develop a nice strong stature and before you know it they're ready to go into something bigger and that's my point guys these animals get big quick I don't care how many times I have to say it so many of these sulcata tortoises end up in reptile rescues because people just can't handle them once they get to that big destructive size but regardless if you're gonna keep these animals you need to start them off the right way right away humidity is so important when they are this little as they develop and they get bigger they become so much more of a forgiving species and they actually prefer drier environments and then they make burrows on their own which is how they find humidity when they want it but when they're this small, you want to restrict them to it. All right, so now that we've hit on hatchling care, which is very crucial for you guys to know if you're going to do this, let's go outside and see what our adults are doing. 
So we're at the limit here. Our sulcata tortoises, as well as our other exotic species, have got to come inside very soon because the nights are getting way too cold. And even though it's nice right now, the challenge that the sulcatas can present is if they go down into those deep burrows and it gets too cold, because they're reptiles and they can't regulate their own body temperature, they'll start to shut down. And then there's gonna be no physical possible way for me to get down into that burrow and safely get them out before it gets too cold. So that is a challenge that a species like this is going to present you with if you live in a climate where you do get a real winter. So uh, good news is I see Dixie right here. She's out and about and she's nice and warm in the sun. So it's gonna be easy to get her in. Uh, I don't see Morby yet. So here's their burrow that I've shown you guys in other videos. It's 10 feet deep at this point, or should I say 10 feet long? It goes down about 30 and a half inches. Um, and that's not something I want to try to pull these animals out of. It just would not be possible to really do without some serious help. Not to mention it causes the animal stress. So I'm going to look down in here and, you know, <laughs> hopefully we don't have Morby in there. I can't even, I can't even see the uh, end of it. I don't... That just keeps going. And you know, you don't fill these things in because you don't want the animals to start going in different directions. We lucked out, they dug this way, so they're in still our containment area, which means they're not in any danger of escaping our property. Um, let me check over here. Do you see him? He might be in the green room. Oh, okay, here he is, here he is, here he is. Oh, look at this. <laughs> Talk about timing. See this? He must have just come out of the burrow a little while ago. So, uh, that's good. I'm gonna have to isolate him now because we're not quite ready for them to come inside. But let me show you what I'm working on for them. <laughs> Voila, looks like a big giant mess, right? Well, it is right now, but this is meant to be a messier room. This isn't like our finished reptile or nature room on the other side of this building. You guys have asked many, many times, what do we do with our bigger animals for the winter? Well, you're looking at it. We do a version of what you just saw Al do at his place where we bring the tortoises into this side of the building, but they get pretty much the entire room of it. There are only a couple other enclosures in here, and actually, the pre-existing enclosures that were on the ground up against the wall have now been ripped out, because Mickey, our Aldabra tortoise, Morby, Dixie, our sulcatas, and even some of our radiated tortoises are much too large for containment that they were in when they were smaller. So now, they're going to get to have quite a bit of room in here. Now, what contrasts what Al did was we did a gravel floor in our building and we're in a milder area of southern New Jersey than he is. We're on the coast here, so our winters are naturally milder with milder temperatures, which means that things don't get quite as cold here. We don't really get too many frigid days or nights. We barely ever even get snow. So by having kind of an open floor like this, everything drains right down into the earth, which is nice. So the tortoises can do their thing. We'll clean this periodically because this all gets dressed up with hay or straw and the tortoises get heat lamps and they really have everything they need in here to get through a few months of winter before they go back outside into the beautiful South Jersey environment that we have here for tortoises. So I've got a lot of work to do. The tortoises are at their limit as I just showed you. It's time for them to come back in and I do not want Morby and Dixie getting stuck down in that burrow because sadly I know some people that have waited too long to get them in in the fall and winter, and unfortunately, the animals got stuck way underground. They couldn't get them out. They couldn't even lure them out, and they perished. We're not gonna let that happen. Promise you guys, they're fine. They will come back in this room as they did last year, as everybody does, except for the species that hibernate. But this is what you're looking at, folks. This is what I mean. This is a huge undertaking. Our electric bill is about to get higher than it usually is, which is something we have to be prepared for in order to really be able to provide these tortoises what they truly need. So any giant tortoise, it's no easy task. Of course, if you can provide for them, there's no experience like it. I promise you, they are some of the most incredible animals on the planet, and don't let the fact that the sulcata tortoise is so common in the reptile trade deter you. If you have the means to provide for one and you can adopt one, I promise you, you will not regret it. They're incredible species. Leave some ideas in the comments for other species-specific videos you'd like to see us do.